Jesus said that I'm going to go and I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he is going to guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. Your beliefs determine your perceptions and your ability to understand something. And so many people don't realize is that we form beliefs by our own decisions or people who have raised us. They, they help us to form beliefs. And then these beliefs determine what we will listen to. So you determine your beliefs, you determine uh, all that you think. So these, we call these heart beliefs. And then once you've determined your heart beliefs, your perceptions of life come through those beliefs. Also, your ability to understand the Word of God comes through those beliefs. We see that more than ever in the last couple of years as people form beliefs that differ from others, causes division, can't understand why people can't see my point of view and, and he can't see and I can't see his point of view. It's because beliefs of the heart are established and that doesn't mean they are right. It just means you form beliefs. These beliefs drop so powerfully into your heart that it will determine what you will listen to. How you look at a situation was determined by heart beliefs. Now, head beliefs, they'll come and go, add a little pain to someone's life, and they'll change beliefs just like that, which is another problem with Christians, is that, you know, as soon as they go through a hard time, they don't believe the Bible the same way. They want to change it. And so, it's crucial for us that we understand that Holy Spirit was sent to this planet after, uh, and of course he was here, but he was sent in a new way after Jesus died on the cross. And the word says, Jesus said, he's here to lead you into all truth. This is where you should form your beliefs. Because if you form your beliefs on fallen men's opinions, religious opinions, when God tries to speak to you and guide you and it falls outside of your off-center beliefs, you won't hear him. So it's crucial. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that Holy Spirit searches the hearts. What is he doing? He is searching your heart to help you by removing beliefs. And he does it through teaching you the word. He removes deep, deep heart beliefs that have kept you in bondage. Deep, deep heart beliefs that don't allow you to even hear him guide you and lead you in an area. Because the area he's trying to guide you and lead you in is all locked up. It says in the word of God that these are called strongholds. These are imaginations. These are reasonings that go against the Word of God. And that the weapons of your warfare are not to fight demons. They've been defeated. They are not to fight other people. They are literally to pull down the strongholds of reasonings that are in your heart. Because when your heart begins to believe true things, now listen close to this. I'm going to help somebody today. I'm going to change your whole life. When you begin to allow the Word of God and Holy Spirit to change heart beliefs, what the heart was designed to do already will flow out of you in such power. It will come out of you with such ability. And, and this is where the, the believers today are so locked up is because their beliefs come from their natural mind, their parents, their religious upbringing, some evangelist on TV. And most often when they go through things, they begin to form the beliefs that drop into their heart. So your heart is where faith is. Here's another word that is so destroyed it means nothing today in the church world. You know, I have faith. Oh, really, what's that? Well, I believe. Really, what's that? What do you believe in? Well, I believe in God. Now, the devil believes there's a God. He hasn't got faith. And people don't understand. And they think they do. Like, they don't understand that in the Old Testament, 
people who, are, who were uh, God's people, they believed in what God said to them or what a messenger brought to them or in the character of God. In the New Testament, people around Jesus believed what Jesus said to do. One word from him would say, come, and Peter would get out of a boat and walk on the water. One word, and he obeyed that one word. But today, there's something uniquely different about faith that people do not seem to get. And that is Jesus said that I'm going to go and I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he is going to guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. He is going after your heart. You become born again by Holy Spirit and then he begins to cause your beliefs to begin to form around the name of Jesus. Now here's where I struggled for a lot of years. The name of Jesus. What does that mean? The name of Jesus. Well, as you begin to study the Word of God, you begin to recognize that the name of Jesus is holding all that that person Jesus did. So today when a born-again believer who knows the Word of God and begins to operate in faith says, in the name of Jesus, what you are saying, and you got to understand this and believe this, is that Jesus died and he took my sins, he took my curses, I am qualified, I'm righteous. Not because of my own conduct or my inability to handle my own guilt, no. I am, I have every promise given to me because Jesus qualified me. So when I say in the name of Jesus, I am using an authority that is Jesus, but he's given it to me and I can command sickness and disease to go in my life. I can begin to declare the word of God. And you say, well, you can't declare that word of God. Who do you think you are? Oh, I'm not declaring it in Leon's name. I'm declaring it in Jesus' name. And so many of the, uh, of the churches today have used this name, they don't under, under, understand it, that the finished work of the cross, when I use the name of Jesus, it means Holy Spirit is allowed to move on a situation because he's qualified me. The Bible teaches us that when your own heart condemns you, you don't receive anything from God. Yet it says in the same portion of scripture, there, 1 John, it says that, but, but God is greater than your heart that is condemning you. Why? Because when you focus on yourself, your heart condemns you. When you think you are able to see a miracle take place or pray over something and your eyes are on yourself, your heart will condemn you because it knows you are not perfect enough. And so people who, who walk in condemnation and who walk in guilt as born-again believers and can't seem to really begin to rise up and do amazing things for God, your eyes are on your fallible um, uh, life. But if you get your eyes on Jesus as the author and the finisher of your faith, who has qualified you for every promise in the word, and as Jesus is, so are we in this world. This entire new beliefs that are here because of the cross turn you from a, a little fearful guy uh, or, or this arrogant, condescending person, and you learn to be meek. Now, the word meek for so many people is such a mess because, you know, when you think of meek, what's meek? A rabbit is meek. <laughs> Harmless. You know, there's nothing really good about a rabbit. You could say, well, rabbits are so good. You don't know if they're good. They got no power to be bad. What's it going to do? You know, attack you and claw you up? Is it going to bite you and take off a leg? No. A rabbit is just, so you can't consider that meek. Meek is what Jesus calls himself. And Jesus said, nobody takes my life. I'll lay it down when I want to lay it down. John 10. Jesus could calm a storm with a word. They would try to kill him. He'd walk right through the entire crowd. Meek does not mean pathetically uh, somebody's slapping post. Well, it says turn the other cheek. Yeah, 
That's, it's talking here very clearly to how quickly you get offended. Oh, be at peace, stay humble before God, and, and stop this like, oh. and, and when you are, you begin to access the power that is within the heart, faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, the gifts God put in you. No. The abilities that you have to use for God. No. When it comes to overcoming the world, it is brought down to a singular word, your faith. Where do you get this kind of faith? You get it from understanding the finished work of the cross. And so when I pray over something and I say in the name of Jesus, that word coming from my lips in my life explodes something deep within me is I'm qualified. I am to act like Jesus. I am to declare his word over situations. I am to know that his armor protects me and the sword of the spirit is the word is the word of God coming out of my mouth. In one name, just in the name of Jesus, that's what it means to me. Now others, the name of Jesus is just a swear word, or it's just the way they end a prayer in the name of Jesus. But they have never taken the time to meditate and allow Holy Spirit to take the beliefs of your heart, these deep set beliefs about who you are, who God is, and what you can do on this planet. And so they live this life with no prayers getting answered, no real miracles taking place, and, and so they change their doctrine. Well, whatever happens is God's will. So we'll just work it out from there. No. Are, are we so naive that it's all God's problem and none of it is mine? Jesus repeatedly said to people, you know, oh, ye of little faith. What did you do with your faith? Uh, on and on when he spoke to his disciples. And so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so this topic of faith is crucial that we are growing and developing by studying and spending time in God's word. In Proverbs 4.20, it says, my son, attend to my words Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Now he says, for they are life. The incredible Zoe kind of life that heals, that pulls down strongholds, that stops enemies, that overcomes everything in the world. And it brings health to your flesh. And then it says, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. You know, I love reading Westerns and I like Western movies. And whenever someone uh, was a law officer, a marshal, you know, or someone who had to protect themselves with a gun, they looked after that gun so well. Today, you'll notice when you get any kind of military training, you can assemble that in the dark. You can put it back together. You know where every piece, every spring, you can lay it out on the table. In fact, in many of the trainings around the world today, they blindfold you, make you put it all back together. They want it cleaned up. Why? The last thing you want when protecting yourself or trying to offensively take an important position is to click, click, and no boom. That's many Christians. It says here, keep your heart with all diligence. Why? Out of it flows the forces of life. Out of it flows the very miraculous power of God. But most people have not even had teaching on the heart. 